Good morning, church. Good morning. Family, friends, the internet. Uh, my name is Reverend Eric D. Lamore, and we're coming from you today from Greater Acquaintance Missionary Baptist Church, where I serve under Pastor Kevin Wilkes. And we thank you for joining us today for our, our message, morning message. Um, thank the congregation. Thank God for traveling grace with everyone that made it here today. So we just want to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Father. Yes. All right. So this morning, speak, scripture reading will be coming from the book of 1 Corinthians. We'll be reading from 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, verses 9 through 16. Amen. Once again, that's 2 Corinthians. I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians, thank you. The second chapter, verses 9 through 16. And the word reads as such. But... For all those who can stand, please stand for the reading of the word. That's once again, 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, verses 9 through 16. And it reads as such. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know that things are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word for the edification of our souls. Amen. 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 Before we go any further, we can bow our heads in prayer and get on one accord together. Father God, I come to you this morning to say thank you, Father. Oh, I thank you, Father God, for everything that you've done for us, Heavenly Father. Every trial, every tribulation, Father God. But you bring us to this here time and this preaching time, Heavenly ah. Father. Every distraction shall be removed, Heavenly Father. We bind any evil spirit, even malice thoughts, Heavenly Father. And we lose your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, which is the topic of the day, Father God. So I pray that you reveal unto us what your Holy Spirit is here for and what we have and what we've been blessed with. But right now, Father God, remove Eric D. Lamour away from this place, Heavenly Father, and let your Holy Spirit, which is my comfort, my guide, my friend, be alongside with me, giving me everything that comes out of my mouth to be of the Spirit and nothing of man, Father. So we thank you, Father God, in advance, Father God, for your spirit and touch. Father God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. My strength in my Redeemer, my Redeemer, Heavenly Father, my Redeemer. So I'm thanking you, Father, for this word. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, church, this morning, we'll be talking a little bit about the Holy Spirit. Before we go into the, the scriptures, 
I just want to give you a little background on the Holy Spirit. All right, then. Now, when we talk about background and the Holy Spirit, you can only talk about the Word of God when we're talking about any type of background of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to read to you out of John, the 14th chapter, verses 16, 17, and 26. And it reads as such. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, yes. whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things yes. Yes. and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. This is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that is saying this to us. So there is no gray area in anything that has been said here. This is a direct truth of what it is that you possess. So today what we're going to do is chop it up a little bit and talk about the intelligence of the Holy Spirit. Ah. Come on, preacher. Make the intelligence of the Holy Spirit. So as a reading that, I want you to keep in mind we have a comforter in God. The spirit of truth, the word of God. And we will be brought to remembrance by God. So this takes me back to the scriptures. And what Paul, in his letter to the church in Corinth, he's telling them about wisdom of God. He starts to speak on the Holy Spirit. Now, we're going to jump right to the nine. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear have heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things of which God hath prepared for them that love him. Very simple. He's telling us, because this letter was wrote many years ago, but the thing about the word of God, it stands true every day of your life. Well, so this word is for us today. Amen. He's telling us God has things for us that the mind of man cannot even imagine. God has some things in store for us that are so supernatural and so unbelievable that they're hidden. Yes. Now in 10, it says, but God has revealed unto us by his spirit these things. What this means is that the Holy Spirit is not just sitting in your soul, but it is here to reveal to you and me what it is that God has for you. Well. The Holy Spirit does not create things, but what it does do, it unveils things that we cannot see. So God is saying, I have something for you that your mother cannot see, mm. that your father cannot see, that your spouse cannot see, that your children cannot see. But I'm going to unveil to you what is yours. Mm. I should have got an amen off of that there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to reveal to you what is yours. We can't even pick out what we want to wear the next day, but God is going to reveal to you what it is that's yours. For the Spirit, it says, 
searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. The Holy Spirit is like a search engine in a computer. Ah, come on. Whatever your request is, the Holy Spirit knows all things. The word just said even the deep things of yeah. God. And it brings before you what is yours. I want you to take that in that is bringing before you what is yours. Your healing, your deliverance. Wow. You're not talking about just no money here. We're talking about spiritual. Wow. What is yours? Amen. Are y'all with me? Now, let me explain the Holy Spirit is not just power or energy. Electricity is power, but do we worship electricity? Mm. A waterfall is power, but do we worship waterfalls? Mm, come on now. They're power, but it's not intelligence. It can run the microwave, keep your lights going, but it can't think. <clears throat> See, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, the correct way to refer to the Holy Spirit is as a he yes, yes, and yes. not an it. Come on, come on, make it plain. When you say it, when you say he, it's not just power any longer. Now you've included intelligence. So what I'm saying is to you today that the Holy Spirit is a person. So with being a person, he can have a personality. So you can grieve the Holy Spirit you can't grieve power or energy. The Bible says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you have been sealed until the day of redemption. Yes. You cannot get feeling out of something that does not have feeling. You cannot get thoughts out of something that does not have yes. thoughts. The Holy Spirit is a he with a personality. You can grieve him because he has the personality. And without that personality, and with that personality, he has intelligence. So the Holy Spirit is to give us his intelligence on our situations in our lives. He gives us information that only he can access directly because he knows the deep things of God. See, if we don't get this importance of what the Holy Spirit is and who he is, then we will downplay the Holy Spirit and override the Holy Spirit's advice for our own. Come on, if we don't know the intelligence of the Holy Spirit. And we wonder why things are not working out in our lives. The word says the, the spirit has the intelligence because it searches the deep things of God. It's a everything all knowing God, the past, the present, the future. The Holy Spirit possesses these type of intelligence because he is a part of the father who created all things. Past, present, future. See, you making decisions through your past and your present. But see, the Holy Spirit is making decisions for you through the past, the present, and the future. You don't know what the future is. See, the Holy Spirit don't want to set you up for something today that you're going to fill in later. The Holy Spirit is going to put you in a place that already knows what you're going to have yesterday, where you came from yesterday. It knows everything that's on your background. It knows everything that's on your record. It knows everything that you did in your last marriage. It knows everything you did at your last job. It knows everything to set you up so in the future you will not
not have these same situations that you had in the past. Well, well, well. How can we have access to that kind of intelligence and not use it? Every day, <coughs> excuse me, every day we make a decision whether you'll take his wisdom over your own. Every morning that you wake up, you are in control. You have a decision to make. And the decision is which voice are you going to listen to? Your life is a direct reflection on what voices you are listening to. Your life reflects the voices that you listen to. You are a sum total of the voices that you hear. That's why you gotta watch who you hang with. That's why you have to watch who you talk on the phone with. That's why you got to watch who you discuss your private business with. That's why you got to watch. Because those voices have an influence on you without you even knowing when you listen to them. You will be influenced by who has your ear. So now that we know the Holy Spirit searches the deep things of God and knows the end from the beginning, how much do you listen to the Holy Spirit? Some people say, I don't know how to listen to the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? Well, I'm going to tell you what the Holy Spirit is. What I want you to do is that feeling that you just had when we were singing them songs, when we were praising God and raising our hands, that is the Holy Spirit. Get to know that feeling. Get to know that sensation. So when that time comes up and the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, you'll be like, oh, that's the Spirit of God, the Spirit of truth. I know that feeling when I get it. And I know it ain't nothing that came to me by man. I know that was something that was unnatural. I know that was a spirit from the Holy Spirit, a direct communication. Come on, know that feeling. That feeling that you were just stuck in. If you weren't just stuck in it, I don't know what to tell you. Definitely get home and get some reading done. Come on, man. Come on preacher. So, Make it plain. <clears throat> 11 says, For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit man which is in him, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Hallelujah. See, Paul's telling us why we should listen to the Holy Spirit now. This means you are getting divine, divine intelligence, secret information from God regarding your purpose. Ah, ah. He is giving you secret information, the Holy Spirit that knows the deep things of God, that if you're listening to him and you're going in his direction, he's giving you something that you can't pay for, you can't look for. He is giving you something that is priceless, secret information from God. You can't get secret information from your wife. You can't get secret information from nobody. But he's going to give you secret information from God. Mm. That's enough for me right there. But then he says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of the, uh, uh, the but the spirit which is of God, that we might know that, ah. oh, that things are freely given unto us. Yeah, yeah, freely yeah, yeah. given unto us. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know about y'all, but I love free. <laughs> you gonna tell me you want me to be somewhere tell me they giving some away free I, I will get up at 6 30 and if they open at 8 yeah. free free we are free indeed see <laughs> come on preacher that's what I want to know that's what we all want to know what are the free things 
that you, God, are giving to me. I want to know, so I'm not wasting time trying to be something that you ain't called me to be. Oh, or trying to please somebody to be something that I ain't. Huh. I want to know, because I don't care. You can go ahead and dislike me. Because I'd rather be out of favor with you and be in favor with God. I want to know the things that are freely given to me. You ain't giving me nothing free but a headache. See, it could be you have a supernatural blessing and you starving to death because it has not been revealed to you because you're not listening to the Holy Spirit. We could be living in turmoil, going without things that we should have, but it's only because we're not listening to the correct voices. He's trying to guide us and direct us. The Holy Spirit don't want nothing but a relationship with you, with uh, us. Come on, That's all that the Holy Spirit wants. It's a relationship. He said, I was left behind as your helper, your comfort, and your guide. Use me. Why are you sitting in a jail cell when I told you to walk that direction? Why are you still sitting here with that man when I showed you that he was no good? Why are you still sitting at this job when I opened up so many other doors over here? Keep it being scared. Come out of fear. Stand in the Holy Spirit. Because he knows the deep things of God. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Ah, uh, preacher. You could be in the best years of your life and uh, miss it because it was not revealed unto you what God has for you. We don't have to be without nothing when he say he'll supply all of your needs according yeah. to his riches and glory in Christ yeah. Jesus. You don't have to be without nothing. You just got to know the voice of the Holy Spirit when it's saying, hey, hey, e, it's over there. Go get it. Check it out. He will reveal it to you. Pray and ask him for your purpose. Pray and ask him for some real healing. He want to give you some revelation in your life. He want to show you that I'm still the same God in these 66 yes. books. I am today. I was yesterday. And I will be tomorrow. Come on, man. Come on. But you got to listen to what I left you with. My spirit. Oh, man. Yes, Knowing things are freely given is wonderful. Because... I don't know about you, but you have to work too hard to get things that ain't yours. <laughs> I don't know about you. Things that ain't yours, you got to work too hard for. You got to steal. You got to sneak. You got to cheat. You got to lie. And that's when you know it ain't yours because all the devil tricks is in it. That's when you know it ain't yours. You got to do all that to get that man. You do not need him because he is not yours. You got to do all that to get that position at the job. You best believe that job is not yours. And you got to do all that to get where you're going. It ain't yours. But I'm going to tell you something. But at the same time, we doing all this backbiting and backstabbing on each other. And at the same time, the only thing is you booking for the assistant manager position. And God already had you as a general manager. All you got to do is go to the Holy Spirit and let him reveal. The Spirit will reveal and tell you where you're supposed to be. You booking for something ain't yours. And don't even know. You're trying to get $10 an hour, but God wants you to have 20 yeah. Because you want to hate. Hmm. Come on, come on. See, once you know your purpose for your life, you got to start speaking out of the word of God. You get something out of knowing the word of God. But you get to a whole nother level when you start speaking God's word. Yeah. See, when you start speaking his word, when your word line up your speech with what you know, woo! oh my God, when you line your speech up yes. your, with what you know and then what the Holy Spirit is telling you, there is not a devil in hell that can stop you from what it is and what God's purpose is for your life. Come on, man. There'll be no distractions. There'll be just direction. 
direction. Because that's what the Holy Spirit is. It's our direction. 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. I love that. Paul is saying here, what the Spirit is going to say to you will go against the natural man's thinking. So even your thinking. See, that's when you know you've been talking to God. Well. When it doesn't make any sense to you. The natural man cannot receive the things from God because the natural man depends on his senses for information. What his eyes see, what his ears hear, what he can taste, what he can smell. All of these things are sensual. See, when God starts talking to you in another dimension, it divides your senses. Mm. And it doesn't make sense well, to you. It doesn't make sense to take two fish and five loaves of bread and feed 5,000 people, including women and children. It doesn't make sense to step out of a ship where you were warm and safe to go out there and walk on water. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to take your last meal and give it to the man of God and bake him a cake. It doesn't make sense to... Mm, now, when you start telling people, you think it don't make sense to you. Wait till you start true believing it. Wait till you really start believing this for yourself. And then you start telling other people. Huh? Tell some other people. They think you crazy. You didn't lost your mind, Eric. But you know what? They don't mean no harm. They don't mean no harm. Because... It doesn't make sense. But faith was never meant to make sense. Well. Faith doesn't make sense to believe in something you don't see. But that's not faith if you don't believe in what it is that the word is telling you. Regardless if you see it or not, it's the truth. Hmm. <laughs> Come on, preacher. Huh. The thing is, is we don't need sensual. We need spiritual. Yeah. We need to get out of our senses yeah. and get into this word deeper and find out the deep things of God that the Holy Spirit is trying to reveal to you through the word because I guarantee you this, what you don't understand in the word, you continue to read it, you continue to pray to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will open up a door of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to you to get a clear understanding of what it is that his purpose is for your life. Come on, preacher, that's a mouthful. You know, when you walk in a room, and you say, like, something just not right. You meet this guy. Yeah, look at him. There's something about that dude. That's the spirit. You couldn't smell. You couldn't taste it. You couldn't touch it. You couldn't see it. But it was something up in here, in your belly, in your pit. That just told you something. That's the Holy Spirit. It worked in more than one way. Yes, yes, yes. All right. I'm going to speed it up here. So, hmm. Now we have it. Now use it. Mm. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> <laughs> There's no. Oh. You have it. Now use it. See, this is. We all have it. We're just not using it. See, the Holy Spirit wants to interact with you. It wants to. But we have to. We're not working it out. We're not exercising our Holy Spirit skills. See, in Hebrews, 14, Hebrews 5 and 14, it says that we need to exercise our spiritual senses. Why would we do this? Because it gives you the ability to diverse good and evil. 
once you exercise them. So we need to take our spiritual senses to the gym and work them out. They get stronger just like we get stronger when we go to the gym. See, I'm a skinny guy, as you see. You might look at me standing next to Brother Walter here and say, he ain't got no muscles. <laughs> but the truth is, is I got the same exact muscles that Brother Walter has. The only thing is, I'm not going to the gym, exercising and using them. We all have the same spirit given unto us. It's up to you to go to the gym and exercise to get the ability to talk to the Holy Spirit and understand exactly what's going on. Just because he's big doesn't matter. I mean I don't have the same muscles. It just I ain't develop my muscles at the same time. I don't care how big you are. I know who's in me. I can just stand up straight and tall because I know that we are the same. If you don't exercise, you ain't getting the results. 15, and we're going to go to get that to our clothes. But, but, the, but that is spiritual I'm sorry, but he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. When you operate in the spirit and he or she is operating out of their senses, they cannot touch you. They can talk about you like a yellow belly dog, but they cannot touch you. They cannot interfere with you because spiritual things, spiritual things. When you talking about things in the senses, how many people that hated on you? Come on now, you still done made it. You going. You're still trucking. They can try to judge you, but they can't. You are the judge of all things, not them, because the word says it, not me. It's all up to you and you exercising your senses. Get in contact with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is waiting on you to come out and call his name. Uh, they can talk about you. They can do what they want, but it don't matter. It don't matter. It doesn't matter. If you think, if you, think you know what's good for you, when God has a purpose for you, they can't curse what God has blessed. When God has called you to do something, nobody can stop you. Nobody can stop you. If you don't believe me, ask Jonah. You can get in a boat, head in the wrong direction. You can be swallowed up by a fish, but you still go to Nineveh. It doesn't matter if God's purpose is for your life. It don't matter what's going on. That process will still take place. You might have some bumps and some bruises. You know what? You can't even get in the way of what God's purpose is for your life. So you can even stop trying. Nobody can stop if God be for you. Who, is, who, who can be against you? Nobody can be against you. No weapon for the against you shall prosper. You are the seed of the righteous. You will be blessed. You are. You are. And look, when you're listening to the Holy Spirit, he said the things are freely given to you. It kind of ties up like this. He said, when you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added on to you. But see, when you're seeking them, you have to seek them and you have to pray to the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit will reveal what it is that's freely given to you. That's why he said, all these things shall be added on to you because it's free. He already know it was going to be added on to you because it was already paid for and the price that Jesus paid at the cross. So he knew it was going to be free. He knew it was already given. All you had to do is talk to his Holy Spirit, the third trimester. All you had to do is communicate with him and then he was going to give you exactly what was free. All you got to do is trust God. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. You better tell somebody, I got the intelligence of the Holy Spirit. I have the intelligence of the Holy Spirit. I have the intelligence of the Holy Spirit. I got something that'll warn me. I got something that'll comfort me. I got somebody that open doors. I got something that'll close doors. I got something that'll let me know what corner not to walk around. I got somebody to let me know whether that man or woman is good for me or not. I got somebody to let me know that it's going to be okay. All right. That's good. That's good. Let me end with this. The mind of the Holy Spirit is a terrible thing to waste. The intelligence of the Holy Spirit. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. What you don't use, you lose. Amen.
Amen. As we hear a great acquaintance come together for prayer, please know that we are also praying for you. Those who are watching us through Facebook Live, those who are streaming us through YouTube, we want you to know that God is still in control. God is walking in front of you to lead you, beside you to befriend you, behind you to protect you, and over you to give you peace. And if you still feel discouraged, if you still feel lost, if you still feel abandoned, ask God to carry you because he's that kind of friend. We at Great Acquaintance would like to hear from you. If you are in the Chicagoland area, won't you visit us at 6758 South Wabash Avenue. You can send us a message or a prayer request through our website at www.greatacquaintancechurch.com or you may call us at 773-488-2991 and as we say here at Great Acquaintance always tell somebody you love them thank you for joining us